Today, I am going to be attempting the Marty Friedman masterpiece, Tornado of Souls. And this is a long time coming. I feel like maybe the most requested solo when I do like live streams or any instance where somebody can ask me to play a song, there's a good chance somebody's out there screaming, Tornado of Souls! The reason is because it's extremely difficult and they just want to watch me fail. I think that's that's the reason behind it, not because they actually want to hear the solo. So I'm going to try and learn it for you guys today and you can watch me crash and burn or you can watch me succeed. Depends on what happens at the end of the video. If you haven't seen a video like this, basically I go through Note for note, line for line in this guitar solo, listening by ear, I'm not using any tabs or tutorial videos. So for better or for worse, I'm gonna to try to learn this solo by ear to the best of my ability. It may take one minute, it may take one eon of time, probably closer to the latter, but hey, I will certainly condense this video to the highlights. So hopefully you are able to take away some of my learning processes. This method of learning guitar solos and anything really by ear is the way I encourage any guitar player to work. I kind of discourage people from tabs unless it's a real time saver and you're in a crunch because if you're learning by ear, it's just developing your musicianship and allowing you to play better in any musical situation you find yourself in. So that's my mindset, take it or leave it. Let's get on to this thing. I'm going to start from the top. I think it's about three minutes and 10 seconds into the song. Marty Friedman, please be nice to me. Okay. That's what it sounds like. That was a real Marty Friedman thing. He always does those kind of real offbeat bends. Okay. So that's just like a, it sort of sounds like B harmonic minor. The difficult thing with this solo that I'm already anticipating is the melodic rhythm. So he's really putting a lot of just juice on these notes and he's not on the beat. So that's always the hardest thing. It's not like a Dragon Force solo where everything is very articulated. That measure contains this many exact 16th notes and this many exact eighth notes and this many exact 16th note triplets. Like with the Marty Friedman stuff, it's a lot more kind of soulful and as a result, the articulation and nailing the exact spot where he hits the notes, it's gonna be challenging. Okay, so far so good. Okay, same kind of concept there. So that's in the, uh, that's actually the major third. Up to the fourth. Marty Friedman vibrato. So it's one of those, see these rolls are always what separate great pentatonic players from kind of standard pentatonic players because your natural tendency with pentatonics is to just go like like kind of linear but when you have this vertical motion with these rolls that's really a cool and different sound and a way to kind of break out of that tonality or at least stretch it a little bit further so sounds like that's what he's doing All right. 
let's move on. Oh. Okay, can't get too far ahead of yourself. All right, so this kind of sounds like uh, some sort of arpeggio, maybe in the Locrian position, so like. It's kind of hard to hear also. So out of that position, I would say. I think that's the first few notes. But it's like a slide, so that's what kind of leads me to believe it's this Locrian shape. Oh. Like that, getting closer. So it does include these couple Locrian notes. getting there. Let's move forward. Again, I'm going to uh, obviously not try and get this 100% right away. I'm sort of just trying to memorize the phrases and then the real work comes after I've memorized the whole solo to get it up to speed. So let's keep going. So I'm sort of just using my instinct and inhibitions as a guitar player, drawing from these major scale three note per string positions. That's how I'm able to sort of detect these notes uh, quicker than maybe somebody who doesn't know these shapes or something would. So here we have this little... There's a lot of arpeggios in this uh, tune, so... I want to do that because a lick of mine, or not maybe mine, but a lick that I like doing is this uh, unison. Again, it's all about the melodic rhythm with this phrase. This is a tough one. It's so unique to Marty's tendencies, it's so difficult to emulate. Whew. Okay, that's where we're at right now. And I believe it starts to pick up some speed at this point. Okay. Despite how difficult this sounds regarding the speed, this is a lot easier from an ear training perspective because the notes are very defined and the shapes are ergonomically, they can pretty much only be played one way at this speed. So I think I already went through the hardest section. Let's put it that way. This is just a minor triad arpeggio.
Does he bend this note? Because that would be a step and a half bend. Or does he slide? No. Oh, you know what it is? It's just, uh, it's no attack. It just is a whole step and then a half step vibrato. So. So I think some of these arpeggios are actually only two strings instead of three. Again, I'm, it's the melodic rhythm that's really, this is the note that I hear, the, the last note that I hear before the slide, as opposed to this one, which I was playing. So it's. I was playing. Ah, that's where I'm messing it up. I gotta hit that natural minor note. Yeah. That's the difference. I'm gonna use my same frame of reference. What is the last note before I hear that? Uh, that sweet. I think it's. Yeah, that's it. All right, let's get these notes precise. All right, now just play that at double speed and we've got it. Let's move on. Oh, ho, ho. forgot about that one. That is sick. Okay, so this is like a major seven arpeggio, or just a major. That's where it's derived from. And I was able to recognize that. This is like the first arpeggio that most guitar players learn, like uh, for, you know, five string sweeps. This is the shape. It's just very ergonomically friendly, even this high up on the neck. Um, luckily this Revolta has really great neck access, but, uh, yeah, this shape, that's like the first, that's like the bread and butter for most guitar players if you know basic sweep picking and arpeggio shapes. And it's just triad based. So it's an E major triad. Now that is really hard to hear the exact notes going on. You know, I think based on the way Marty plays this solo, I don't actually think this sweet position works. First of all, it is, uh, I just think that he might have some more use of the neck in this one. So I think it's, th it's definitely these notes, but I think it's like something more like. Something like that. I think it might be that so he can kind of free himself up from this area of the neck and then do, do whatever that next part is. Where's Stevie T when you need him? 
it's got to be simpler than I'm making it out to be. I don't even think it's a sweep because I don't hear any pick attack. But it's like boo boo ba 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 That's it. Freaking string skip. And you can't hear the pick attack because of like the EQ, but that's gotta be what it is. And it fits in with all the, the stretches that he's been doing. stank on that phrase. Okay. <laughs> that is so badass. to that pentatonic uh, thing that I talked about, my tendency is to go that little, you know, like following the box outline, but he avoids that and just as less is more, that kind of thing. Uh. Oh, I'm just playing the wrong note. Getting some nice little bluesy. That sounds like it's diminished. Yeah. Ah, so I, I was missing a note. It ends on the B flat. At least we got it. Let's move to this next crazy part. <laughs> it's almost like Mixolydian. That's what we're gonna go with. Let's move on. We will clean it up in time. Here's the uh, the finale, I guess you could call it. Okay, this is definitely the fastest part, but this is the part I'm actually like the most comfortable with because it's really just pull off, hammer on and pull offs, and putting your fingers in the right spots. Uh, so let's take this first little bit. So the actual pattern for most of these is something like... And now we have, I think, the same... Is that the stretch? No way. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> I 
Rest in peace, people with small hands. Ooh. Okay, so that's 17 to 10. That's the stretch. Whoa. Ending's like <laughs> What the hell is that? Oh my god, is this solo ever end? Alright, so what? Is that it basically, right? Oh, I heard that part. Let's see if I can somehow get something mildly close to whatever this thing is. I mean, it's almost like... It's basically the entire solo in two bars. That's what he did. <laughs> Everything sounds be fine as long as there's a blues lick at the end. <laughs> okay, um, that's where I'm gonna stop right now. I think you've seen my process and I've gotten all the licks down except for that. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. I'm gonna do something that somewhat pays homage to the lick, but I'm not gonna go too far in the weeds to try and figure out all those notes because I can hardly hear them and I probably couldn't play them and even if... I'm going crazy. Uh, I'm gonna work on this for about six years and I'll be back in two seconds. <laughs>